So that line about your interpretations are not in line with what you really are is really just another way of saying that that's your false association. And every seeming specific or individual false association is really just a version of that. That you're not in line with what you really are. Yep. This interpretation thing is something that, you know, we can just keep looking at and keep looking at. I was just reading a, a newsletter on the course, and um, they were it was saying in the newsletter, it was contrasting the Jesus of the Course with the Jesus of the Bible. And the newsletter was saying they're not the same. They're not the same Jesus. And then I read another newsletter and it was saying the God of the Course and the God of the Bible. And it was basically saying they're not the same God. And the key thing there is you know, and there was a lot of evidence. There were quotes from the Course to support that this is the real God, and that the God in the Bible was not the real God, and that this is the real Jesus, and that the Jesus of the Bible wasn't the real Jesus. But to me, again, it's kind of funny because God is God, but it's just, it's the interpretation. You find in the Bible what you're looking for. You know, there are those that have come and used not this, but the Bible as their tool, and have really, in sincerity, prayed and prayed and prayed for discernment and clarity, and have received it. You know, and so, how many gods are there? <laughs> how many Jesuses are there? To me, it's it's just the whole thing with interpretation is is you'll find what you're looking for. And as long as your mind isn't clear, you can, you won't find God in the Course or in the Bible. God or Jesus, you'll find them in your mind. And that these are just tools to help you come to a clearer interpretation of the world and then to know God. So to me, that's a, that's a key point because then if you start to break interpretations or, or even God or Jesus down into specific things, you know, it it makes it seem like there are two different ones and and they're not. There's only one God. <laughs> and there's one Jesus. So you're saying that fear and teaching are that interpretation brings witness to what the mind believes. Forgiveness is an interpretation, but Jesus says in the Course that it's the one illusion or it's the one interpretation that leaves out of all the rest. So, to me, you know, on one hand you could say the one question a lot of times is which of, which of these illusions do I prefer? Well, if you're going to prefer one illusion, or hope or wish for one, forgiveness is the one, because it leads, it leads out. And all the other ones, where you make an interpretation of this is the way, or this is the way, or I found it over here, or it's in this person, or that, you know how Jesus said, beware of many false Christs, <laughs> you know, in the Bible, anytime you would attempt to think that there's a specific form or person or place that's sacred or that this is the way to enlightenment or whatever, forgiveness is not specific in that sense. Forgiveness is stepping back and just seeing the false is false. It's very simple. Very simple. So forgiveness is the one interpretation of the Holy Spirit. Yes. So it's not that I don't want to interpret, but it's like which interpreter 
do I want it to line up with? The mind has to interpret, I guess. So that, that's, the, that's the function of the mind. Mm -hmm. The nature of the mind. Interpretation, another word for interpretation that really is equal to is perception. So, so you're going, as long as the mind's asleep, it's going to perceive. But instead of just dismissing all perception, Jesus says there's false perception and then there's true perception. And he says the only way you're going to get to no perception <laughs> or the kingdom of heaven is you got to come to true perception. you got to have that constant purpose to stabilize all perception and then perception vanishes once you come to the needle <laughs> you got to find the needle in the haystack and then your haystack is gone <laughs> so if we keep asking what the purpose is and we it'll be a uh, What's for? It's a, yeah, right, what for? What would you have me do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me do? And it's a boom. 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 Or we were just listening to the Raj tapes out there, and Raj was saying that, you know, a question is a leading edge to the answer. And again, the question, the what is this for, is, the, is a real meaningful question. If you keep asking that question, you have to arrive down at at the purpose. Mm -hmm. It just seems, it can seem overwhelming at times. It can seem easier to quit <laughs> asking what is it for. If I'm watching a movie and saying, what is this for? It's like the ego says, just sit back and be entertained. Exactly. Forget your problems. Get caught up in the movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and veg out a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. You've been working hard. You deserve a break. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I can't Show do this all what's the time. Wrong with it. <laughs> well, again, it's the purpose. If if it's being used as a distractive device, like alcohol can is can certainly be a distractive device. You know, you can start to see. And again, it's the purpose. Here you have all these old movies. What a wonderful opportunity to sit there, say, Holy Spirit. You know, here, Let's go through help me get clear. Which one we can keep. Or just guide me to which ones are helpful to watch for the healing of my mind. That's, it doesn't say the movies are bad or watching movies are bad, but it's just, what's my purpose? Am I, am I using it to just try to, you know, cover over all my feelings and just escapism, I think, is the, the term a lot of times. There's a lot of these adventure movies where it's, it's kind of can be an escapism to get off into another world, or am I using them to watch my mind and see what what my emotions are and what? It's kind of like, am I using them because I'm tired of watching my mind, or am I using them as a tool to watch my mind? Well, I get tired of watching my mind too. Let's take a break from watching my mind. It, and Bud calls it spiritual indigestion. <laughs> but when I, is it possible to take a break from watching my mind and stay at peace? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And what is it I really want? Well, do I want to? I want to stay asleep a little longer. <laughs> you know, we shall see. That's a, that's a question that that is posed to each of us. <laughs> yeah. well, wow. Some wish to stay in the world a little longer. Yeah. Well, the end I is have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, you know. Yet the ending is certain. Thank heavens. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's certain, we could take a little break now and then. <laughs> you ain't going to get off that easy. You can. You can take a break, but the question is still there. Do I want to be at peace? And is it really a break if I'm not at peace? 
And can I be at peace if I stop watching my mind? My experience says, no. When I stop watching my mind, that's when I get in the muck. And that's no break, really. I mean, that, that's not what I consider a break. doesn't feel good. I think of a break as something that's supposed to feel good. Something I like. Something that's desirable. Being the muck is not something I like and it's not desirable. I think a, a good word we could just French and briefly is effort. And what I've you know, really discovered is that I want life and, and being to be effortless. You know, we've all had the experience when something just seems effortless. It's very comfortable and peaceful and restful. And with this mind training business, it's, it's like the, the expenditure of effort is in the front end. <laughs> you know, it's when the mind is untrained and it's, it's, it's distorted, it's distracted, it's all these, it's, uncom it's conflicted, then, it, it, so to speak, if I've moved and I've been using my effort to learn the world and to judge, then initially to turn my direction around in the other direction seems to take effort. And what I've experienced with the Course, you know, like I've said, it keeps saying the same thing over and over and it's just pointing to the same thing. And, and like you've been talking about, sees how all oh, the meaning is now, it's there. I'm, I'm not reading sentences, I'm just saying, what did he say? It's like, it's, it's clicking in, it's clicking in. Mm -hmm. To me, there's a momentum that gains. And the, the, the most effort is in the beginning, when you're just turning, and then, as the ball gets rolling, so to speak, you know, it's like it starts rolling down the hill, it picks up momentum, mm -hmm. and, the, and the more you do it, the, the more you don't have to, to think about it, or it becomes, there becomes an ease and an effortlessness to it. And of course that makes sense to me. It doesn't make, I've never, I've always been thought, what is this when I've heard people say that you have to go through one big trial at the end. <laughs> You know, like you got to go through all this stuff and then at the end you have a giant test waiting for you. That doesn't... cheat on that test. Yeah. And that doesn't resonate. The way I see it is, it, to me, my experience has been that I went through lots of wandering and, and confusion and hurt and conflict. And the more I've given my mind to really watching my mind and questioning my beliefs, that it's it's gotten easier and easier and easier. And so, to me, that's good news. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that the effort's required to just really at the beginning. And then you start to see that it's mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. that there's yeah, I think in the beginning it can even feel like this snowball or whatever is being pushed uphill. But once you hit the top, once you reach the crest, and it starts going down the other side. You just got to give it a kick every yeah. once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah, this mind watching, though, it's, it's, it's really, uh, that's something so new. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's like practice, practice, practice. I mean, that's, that's the message that keeps coming through. Mm -hmm in the workbook lessons. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it does require practice. Just like any new skill. Yeah. Any new skill I'm learning. Right. You can't put it, it on the shelf no. and it has expect to, be to remember. Yeah. It has to be a daily thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A recommitment. Mm -hmm. And if I ask the Holy Spirit, as I've been asking the Holy Spirit to guide me through the day, in everything I do, then I'll get the help there. And I won't be watching Bud's mind, I'll be watching my mind. <laughs> that's the old, that's yeah. the old me. 